Okay, hi. Um, next topic, uh, independence, is, um, is uh, directly related to conditional probability. So last time we saw that, in general, if I wanted to, if I had some of an E, I compute the probability of E. We saw that in general. We saw many cases, right? We saw, it's beginning to understand in general. So this is generally speaking. Right. So independence is just when um, that inequality is an equality. Okay. So. So sometimes it could be. So. Um, so our definition will be. If. Um, e and F are both out events in the same sample space, then. Um, we say. E and F are independent, or the set E and F is independent. Um, if and only if, so we say this, if probability of E given F is just equal to the probability of E. Remark. From the definition, this is equivalent to the three are equivalent. P, E, this is the same as saying P, F given E is P, F. And this is the same as saying P, E, F is equal to, well, think about it before we could condition on E or F, right? So this is P, E given F, say, times P, F. But then if P, E given F is P, E, well, then it's just P, E, P, F. So these are all equivalent ways. You either have one or you have none. Okay, if they are true, E and F are independent. If one of them is not true, E and F are, um, are not independent or dependent. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. I won't do as many as in the uh, class notes. I don't want to, otherwise, it may take me forever. So let's see, let's do an example. Suppose, um, so yeah, okay, so let's do something similar to last time. Let, uh, let D be doubles. Okay, we roll two dice. Let E be sum greater than 10. And let F equals, say, sum equals 11. Uh-huh. Okay, so here we have three different ones. Yeah, this is good. So let's do some of these, see if they're independent. Okay. Well, we can check these for independence using any of the results. So up here, I don't know if ahead of time if any of these are. So let's try um, P uh, E given D. Um, so if I'm given doubles, What's the probability the sum is greater than or equal to 10? I think you can see it without doing it that this is a third, right? Because I have six doubles and two of them, the sum is greater than or equal to 10. So I have two over six, a third. Now, what is the probability of E? I don't think it's a third. So this is not equal to probability of E greater than or equal to 10 would be six, would be one sixth, right? 6 over 36. So E and D are not independent. So E not independent. Or you can write dependent. Okay. All right. Well, let's check the other two. What about D and F? P, let's do F given D. 
What's the probability of the sum is 11 if I've told this is zero? So this is clearly not equal to um, one over 18 P of F. So F and D also not independent. Okay, what about, let's try E and F. I think I'm going to guess they're not. P, E, um, well, P, E, yeah, that was confusing. For P, E given F is what? If the sum is equal to 11, what's the probability of sum is this is equal to 1? And this is not equal to P of E, which is um, 1 sixth. Not even close, right? So these are really uh, dependent, and it makes sense. If you know the sum is 11, you know the sum is greater than or equal to 10. So this is equal to P of E. So also E and F, not independent. This is the usual case, probably. It's maybe more special for them to be independent. Okay, let's do another example. I'll do another example again with dice. Example two. Suppose we say the first die is two, and let's call this E, and let's have um, sum is uh, sum is I, and let's call this uh, F sub I. Okay, so I have a family of events where the sum is I. All right, so let's uh, let's determine whether they are independent. Um, so um, so let's do it like this. Let's have probability of um, yeah. Let's do it like this. Probability of F I given E, and here we'll have probability of F I. This is how we'll check, and here we'll have I. And here we'll say uh, independent or dependent. Okay. All right. So if I is two, I don't know why I put these in the um, probability. The sum is two. This is one over 36. Now, what's the probability the sum is two given the um, Given the first die is two, this would be zero. So these are dependent. Okay, what about a three? What's the probability the sum is three? This is uh, two out of 36, right? And what's the probability the sum is three if the first die is two? It's one sixth, right? So this is three, so these are dependent. What about four? What about four? Well, it's gonna be a sixth again, right? I need a two on the second roll, but this one here is three. There's three out of 36, so again, dependent. What about five? Well, five, let's see, there's four out of 36, or one ninth, but um, still one sixth. Okay, how much time do we? Okay, what about six? Well, if I get a four, I have a sum of six. So this is one sixth. But six is five out of 36. This should be a six. So this is dependent. Uh, but here we are. Took a while, but we got here. Seven. What's the probability of seven is six out of 36? One sixth probability is seven. If the first die is two, is one sixth. That's the probability the second die is five. So these are independent. All right, if we keep going, what happens? What about eight? Five out of 36, one sixth, right? If I get a six on the second, I have an eight. So there's a one sixth chance. So this is dependent again. Now, what about nine? 
9 is 4 out of 36, 10 is 3 out of 36, 11 is 2 out of 36, and 12 is 1 out of 36. But what's the probability I get a 9 if the first die is 2? This is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So these four are dependent. Okay, okay. So we found one where they're independent. The probability the sum is 7 and, I mean, sorry, the event that the first, uh, that the sum is 7 and that the first die is 2 are independent. Okay. All right, there are more. Um, I'm going to stop and we'll start another video.